Okay, welcome to this uh, video. Today I will uh, talk about my Panto router. So uh, this right here is my Panto router. This is a machine that I built a few months ago. Uh, and uh, first thing first, I want to say a big thank you to uh, the guy behind this machine, the guy who, who designed this machine is called Matthias Wendell. Uh, he has a website called Wood Gears, a YouTube channel and all, all this other stuff. I, I highly encourage you to check out Matthias' uh, website, YouTube channel, and uh, Facebook uh, profile. All he does, this guy is uh, is incredible. He does a lot of really nice woodworking, and uh, he designs many uh, homemade uh, shop tools, including this pen to roller, which is his design. So I bought the plans uh, from his side. I will put a link down in the description. I bought the plan, I built everything according to the plan, uh, except for a few additions that I made that I will talk about later. So what is a Pento router? Uh, this is actually a machine built to make uh, this router right here uh, move according to a template. Uh, I can put a template up here. Uh, this right here is actually a template for uh, a mortise, a slot mortise uh, that I can cut with the Pento router, I can see. I don't know if you can see the, the little bearing here. Uh, I can remove that and I can show you. There, there is a little bearing on the on the steel rod that I can change this bearing to be of other sizes if I want, but I found that this size works nice for most of the stuff. So I just put it there, make it uh, run along the template that is up here. And oops, as the template, uh, as the, the, the bearing moves around the template, the actual router moves of the exact same distance reduce in half. So the, there is a, a two for one component going on here. So the template is two times larger than the actual uh, uh, tenant in this, uh, in this case will be cut. So uh, of course the, the template can be of any size. Uh, I do have a few I made for, uh, for some testing, but uh, Really, imagination is, is the only limit here. Uh, these are for cutting uh, tenons for uh, uh, dowels, actually, just uh, when uh, the, the little hole in the middle. I, I mean, I, I could have two templates for uh, one for the dowel, another one for the hole, but this type of, type of templates allows me to, to, to do both with the same template. Same goes for this one. If I just go around, I, I cut the, the actual tenon, and if I just reverse this thing here, put it on the other side actually and put the end of the, the steel rod inside the, this little slot here in the middle it actually cuts just slides horizontally to to cut the the, uh, the mortise so the this type of template allows to to do both operations with only one template uh, those are for dowels uh, those one here and i will show you in a minute you'll see this machine in action are for cutting dovetails. You can even cut dovetail with the with this machine, uh, and you can put several uh, templates on the on this mounting uh, uh, panel here. I did three. Uh, by the way, all of those templates are three D printed because I also own a three D printer, and I find that uh, designing those templates very accurately in in a CAD uh, modeling software is re really nice to do. And it does some uh, some nice output. You you are you are you always get the same result, the exact same size for all the templates. Of course, you can also make the templates out of wood if it's if you want to do that. Uh, Matthias on his sites actually uh, did many templates for the Panther router out of wood, and it works pretty well too. But it does require a little more work to get those templates uh, of the exact size. For example, those three ones. If you want to get three exact same size in in uh, in wood. Uh, it's a little more work than just 3D printing and putting the print button three times for this uh, this one. But uh, I, I get it that if you want to do a thing uh, yourself in, in wood, it's okay too. So you actually put the template up here. You make the you, you use this uh, this lever here and this other one here to actually control the movement of the of the rotor and uh, the, the the plunge action of the rotor. You've got those little two. Uh, stop blocks here that can limit how far, uh, as an example, how far it will go uh, one way or the other. Uh, and 
This panel here also has a few uh, knobs here that allows to adjust it up and down too, which uh, can allow to to have the, temp, the, the rudder uh, at, at the right position according to the stock that you're, you're putting here. Uh, this table is just, uh, I mean, just a, a table to hold the, the, the stock that you want to, to cut. Uh, this is a little uh, incorporated uh, clamp that you get, but you can also get uh, use other clamps. This thing slides here and just some kind of a square. I, I did everything according to the plan that uh, Mattia sells and it's very well designed. Of course, you can use all of that, uh, but you can add your own clamps or uh, square or anything that you want to actually clamp the, the, the work piece that you're working on. So that's about it. Uh, the few things that I added, uh, the first one and not the least is this uh, little dust shroud that I 3D printed also. Uh, I, I got the idea of that and I, I'll show you a few close-ups after that uh, of this uh, this piece here uh, and by the way uh, the STL files for uh, this shroud and all the templates that I currently have I even designed just for fun of it a little uh, curve one just to to see how it goes and I, I did use it and it works okay uh, I'm not exactly sure why you would like to use a joint like that but why not uh, so this shroud here uh, is something that I designed myself in the, in the CAD modeling software and uh, I've got the idea from uh, a few other videos that I've seen online, a few other builders of this Panther router did some experiments, but I think that my solution is pretty nice. Uh, you'll see it in action in a few minutes. It uh, it sucks up all the dust very well. Uh, it's actually attached to my dust collector through this hose here, and I also 3D printed this little adapter here to go for the, the standard four inch hose. Uh, of course, it will get in the way sometimes, uh, but not that much uh, from my experience, and I can always remove it if I want. It's just a matter of a few minutes, uh, three volts actually. Uh, it's not as easy to remove uh, as the, the commercial version because you can actually uh, these days get a commercial version of this Penta rotor. Uh, it is the same design actually. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure Matthias Wendell designed and invented this actual tool. But there is a company out there that sells some uh, commercially made Penta rotors out of aluminum. and uh, they, they look really nice. I think they work really nice too. You can uh, look this up online, but uh, they cost a lot of money. And they, they have some kind of a dust collection adapter too. Uh, theirs is probably way better than mine, but hey, this one uh, cost me maybe uh, one or two dollars of plastic and a few hours of 3D printing. If it ever gets busted, I just print a new one. And this little uh, crown here is just made out of a, a, a seven up bottle that I, a two liter seven up bottle that I, I just cut uh, to the size with those little fins. And uh, it gets a little busted when I I, uh, I do push it through the, through the stock, like you can see. But this is just plastic. This is flexible. This allows the all the dust to to go inside, and it works really well. And you know what, if it ever uh, breaks or anything, I can print a new one easily and get a new 7-Up or any other uh, uh, soft drink uh, bottle for a couple of bucks. So pretty cheap, works well, and I'm pretty happy with that. So uh, that's about it. Uh, if you want to know more about Panther Rotter, I really highly encourage you to check out uh, Matthias' website. And he has lots of uh, videos about this machine, how he designed it, how it works. Uh, you can see it in action even more on his YouTube channel. Uh, but in the meantime, here is mine. And uh, like I said, a few more close-ups of the machine. Uh, as you can see, it accommodates a, a standard router here. This is a, a Mastercraft router uh, here in Canada, but many other brands will fit. Uh, like you can see right now, I have the, the steel rod, which is uh, supposed to go inside the little slot here, but I can put it the other way around like that. I will show you. And something I can show you also is that, as you can see, uh, my template here is a little tapered. And you see now that where the, the bearing goes, and if I just uh, adjust that maybe a little bit farther like that, uh, it actually enlarges a little bit the, the template and allows to uh, to just uh, sneak up on the, on the the perfect fit for the the tenant you are cutting. So it's really nice to have those little uh, taper on the 
like that on the on the actual templates. Uh, again, not required. You could also completely do those templates in wood. Uh, like I said, it's connected to my to a hose with my uh, dust collector. I also built a, built a little cart to uh, to be able to move it around. I wanted to have it. Uh, Movable, so I added those uh, those caster wheels. Uh, those locks on the caster wheels were not enough to make the the, the machine stable, so I added those little uh, screw. Uh, I'd say rubber pads. Uh, I took those. I don't know where I had those uh, somewhere lying in the shop, and you just screw those like that. So it actually makes the uh, the wheel not in contact with the floor anymore. Just the the rubber pads, there is four of those, and it does a good job of making the, the whole machine stable while you use it. Uh, really happy with that. It was a little bit of work to do. I'm not exactly sure if it was worth it be, uh, versus uh, just buying uh, a little uh, stand for, for that, but those drawers are so useful to put the templates and all the stuff. So that's about it. That's my Panther rubber. Uh, next, I will just show you a few uh, a few shots of me using it. You'll see uh, what it can do. So I hope you enjoyed. And uh, like I said, make sure to check out uh, Matthias YouTube channel that I'll put in down in the description if you are more interested in this machine and want to build one for yourself. Okay, so here are a little more close-up look at uh, the work it can do. So using this template right here, I cut this uh, this uh, mortise and tenon, as you can see, it fits really nice. Uh, I did not uh, spend a lot of time uh, adjusting everything to make sure it was really, 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 really well calibrated, but anyway, it fit uh, nice. It's a little uh, crooked right now, but if you take your time, you can have amazing results. Uh, this right here with those little triangular templates is the the more the the, the dovetail that I cut. Uh, it fits okay. I think it's a little bit too loose. I should probably have uh, took a, a little more time to to make it a little more fit. But if I were to glue this up, I think it would be okay like that. Uh, it fits. I, it fits pretty tight actually. So, and of course you can uh, print more of those templates and have a, a larger piece. And using another bit, I, I actually only uh, own a half inch uh, dovetail bit, but the larger bit I could uh, uh, move those a little bit, uh, change the space between and uh, have different uh, pattern for those dovetails. Uh, here is the 
the the Darwell one uh, using those uh, those three little uh, round templates. You could position those like you want, and uh, I I wanted to to go through all the three holes, but I, I couldn't because something was uh, was in the way, and I didn't think the time to adjust it. But anyway cut those and it fits uh, very well. Uh, it's actually uh, a lot more complicated than it looks to, to achieve that without a pentel router. So this is uh, where the machine shines. It really isn't that complicated to cut this type of joint with this machine. Uh, and the last one that I did is this little uh, wavy uh, thing here, trying to, to demonstrate what you can do. And, and honestly, I have absolutely no idea how you could do this type of joint. Uh, with anything but a pentel router. So this is an example of what you can do. Maybe with a contrasting wood like that, uh, send it and everything, it could, uh, it could actually be, be useful somehow. And uh, last one that I have, that, which is actually something that I'm working on right now to show you a, a real life example of what you could do with this machine. I am uh, right now building an acoustic guitar. This is one of my projects right now. And uh, you can watch my other videos if you're interested about it. And uh, I'm at the point of attaching the neck of the guitar to the body and uh, the way it's done uh, on most guitar and the way it will be on mine is actually using a, a mortise and tenon. So uh, I do actually happen to own this pentarotor, which is a more or less a glorified mortise and tenon machine. So I uh, design again those uh, little templates here. All I have right now is this those test pieces. Uh, this is the type of... Uh, uh, of mortise that you I, I will put on my guitar body and at the end of the neck there will be a tenon like this one so uh, right now it fits okay i think this obviously those just just test pieces but it fits it fits okay i will uh, continue to um, to uh, adjust everything and i will definitely use my panther rotor to uh, to make this uh, this neck attachment in my guitar so uh, check out my other videos if you're interested i should be uh, showing me using that for this uh, this particular uh, neck uh, thing in a, a neck in a, an upcoming video soon.